All right, everyone, the New York Times thinks that there's an intellectual dark web, and it's comprised of people who have, like, nationally syndicated shows for the most part. Now, in all honesty, I, I like some of the people that are on their list. I like, uh, I have no problem with Sam Harris. I like Joe Rogan. I listen to his podcast sometimes. I think he's a cool dude. Um, there are others, others like Gavin. I, I find him interesting. But that doesn't mean that they're part of some uber spooky dooky, really, really, really underground dark web of intellectuals. That's not actually true. This is, this is like low-hanging fruit, the article. Some people are saying controlled opposition. I, I don't believe that. I think that most of these individuals, uh, you know, a few of them maybe not. Most of the individuals on this list, I think, are authentic, more or less, in their beliefs. You know, they do have to market themselves, so they're going to do things that are maybe a little bit out there. Because they're going to make a living somehow. Look, why do you think CNN has police chases? Uh, but if you want the real underground of the intellectual, some people are mentioned in this article that are part of that. Mal New would definitely be part of that. Jordan Peterson is definitely part of that. But where's, where's a write-up about Razor Fist? Where's Mark Collette or H.A. Goodman? Where's Tara McCarthy? <laughs> Where, where, where is Matt and Blonde show or Andy Worski? Are they going to get mentioned or Hard Bastard? There are also, you know, the Golden One or Varg. There are all sorts of people. Some have primarily or solely a YouTube presence at this point. Others branch out more like myself. There's a huge lexicon of literally thousands of people that analyze and speak of society, politics, news and current events, and related topics. The spiritual ties into that, among other things. There is an enormous lexicon of people within this general group that does comprise a massive, massive intellectual dark web whose collective fan base must be in the hundreds of millions. It's an enormous number of people cross-platform, international in nature. Oddly enough, it's very multicultural when it comes to the background of the, of the overall uh, fan base of this lexicon of uh, material, this style. Ben Shapiro is a nationally syndicated multi-millionaire who's very radio friendly. He's, he's barely outside of the mainstream of conservatism. He never, you know, basically ask yourself this. Is the person's commentary ever censored or is it likely to be censored and get them kicked off of a tech platform? If the answer is yes, they may be part of the intellectual dark web. Boy, they're just an asshole. Maybe they just flame war people or something. Maybe they're just troll. You know, trolls and, and intellectuals, I guess, have something in common there. Both get fucked by censorship. If the answer is no, then no, they're not part of any intellectual dark web. I don't think that Ben Shapiro, you know, Mr. Rogers, the political analyst, has to worry about getting, you know, kicked off of his, his show. An advertiser began complaining because of something Mr. Shapiro said. No, he's, he's coherent and intelligent and speaks well, but he's not out there politically. He's not saying anything that other people haven't already said before, for the most part. He is a, he is a marginal libertarian with some neocon ties. He's sort of like a male Ann Coulter or something. I'm surprised they don't date, by the way. Ann Coulter uh, whined months ago about not being able to get a date. Date De uh, Ben Shapiro. He's not married, is he? Fucking date Ben Shapiro. I'm sure you'd, you'd make a great pairing. You know, it'd be kind of funny that Ann Coulter was a foot taller, <laughs> but it'd be hilarious. But no, that's the, the real intellectual dark web. You're, you're looking at it right now, essentially. This is a, who gets uh, defamed constantly by BuzzFeed. No, Shapiro or a Rubin, uh, someone like that, something that they say might get criticized. Oh, well, we, you know, we find this objectionable or whatever, but they don't get defamed. There's no need to defame them. Uh, BuzzFeed and Right Wing Watch and all these others don't constantly hyperventilate about what they say, but they do about us. They do about Lionel. Yeah, they'll hyperventilate about him. Oh, he goes on our team. Must be a Russian propagandist. H.A. Goodman, he used to be a Democrat. Now he's a traitor. Oh, 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 terrible, terrible. Mark Collette said something about nationalism. Oh, start up the presses. No, th this is the intellectual dark web. And sometimes it's comprised of people you don't agree with everything that they say, but we're still all content creators. That's the other hallmark of it. Is the person independent or are they reliant upon other people? If you're part of a nationally syndicated situation, you are fundamentally reliant upon other people telling you what you can and cannot say. The biggest advantage of sites like YouTube for a long time has been that they took a hands-off approach to that and didn't care unless it was criminal or pretty out there. You know, you had to go out of your way to get banned for being offensive for a long time on YouTube. That's why all the interesting political commentary moved here. Now it's, you know, gravitating out. BitChute has a share. It's on Mines and Gab. It's going to Steam it and all these other sites. Some of it takes place on Twitter, certainly. 
Twitter for all intents and purposes. Now, uh, is more hands-on now than YouTube, which I think is sad. Google could have been the savior of free speech. Instead, it's likely to cause the collapse of the internet as we know it and the rise of the next wave of alt tech. Uh, but yeah, intellectual uh, dark web. It's, it's spooky. It's but keep your kids away from Ben Shapiro. He might convince them that the tax rate should be lowered by 5%. He said, Dave, Dave Ruben, Ruben might convince your kids that maybe it's okay to be, you know, not in, to, totally in favor of an open borders situation. It's okay to want to go back to an era in which we guarded our border and had sovereignty. Sam Harris might convince them that nation states are okay. They're not imperialistic and racist. Wow, what out there beliefs. What very fringe ideas I'm hearing from this intellectual dark web. Yeah, some people are saying controlled opposition in the article. I don't think so. I don't think like Joe Rogan or anyone is a controlled opposition. I think they're authentic, but they're not particularly out there. They're criticizing Rogan on this. Oh, he lets other people say off the wall things on his broadcast. He's an entertainer. He's not just, look, he's not trying to be the next Sean Hannity. He's also, he's an entertainer. He's got more in common with the Howard Stern. I think he's had Artie on his show twice now, actually. He has more in common with that side of entertainment. It's, it's kind of infotainment. Yes, there's news. Yes, there's informative commentary. Yes, it gets into society and, and philosophy. The drug war and news, current events, war and peace and politics. Yes, but from an entertainment standpoint. It's not the same as MSNBC. Why do you think MSNBC is dying? It's not entertaining. It's not fun. Because of, of, uh, of the FCC, they can't be fun. They can't swear. They can't come to work dressed like this. They, can, they can't be like Lionel and sit there pontificating in highbrow language. No, they got to dumb it down for their audience. There's the problem with cable news. There's the problem with newsprint. They, they can't do the sort of things that we do. Now, yes, someone like a Rubin or a Shapiro, they have, or certainly a Rogan, they have way more leeway than someone on CNN. You know, Joe Rogan can say fuck on his broadcast. Nobody's going to kick him off the air. But it's still not quite the same. It's still it's still technically mainstream. It's just semi-edgy. It's it's independent commentary, but it's not the same as someone who set up a webcam in their bathroom and made YouTube videos. It's not exactly the same. You can be a fan of Rogan. You, you know, I'm surprised. Crowder, I don't think, is on this list. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. New York Times, really, really hard-hitting journalism there. You can like Joe Rogan or Sam Harris or, or any of these others without considering them to be part of some spooky-dooky, dark, underground, underbelly of the internet commentary. It's, this is the edge of politics. This is the razor's edge of what is fringe. You know, it's the sort of stuff you find on an Onion site. Ben Shapiro broadcast. Uh, no, I just don't think so. That's about all. Peace out.